planning and praying, it's time for the official launch of the Now is the Time Family Health and Evangelistic Series. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Good evening and welcome. Now, we're coming to you live from 114 Hagley Park Road. That's right, we're right beside the Hagley Park SDA Church, right under the big tent. And over the next few weeks, until July 11, we'll be bringing you undiluted Word of God from the Holy Scriptures. Now, our evangelist for the remaining few weeks is Dr. Newton Cleghorn. He is a religious educator and he currently serves as the Vice President of Student Services at the Northern Caribbean University, NCU. Before that, he was the Dean of the School of Religion and Theology, same place at NCU. And, of course, Dr. Cleghorn will be giving us a spirit-filled message right across the time. He is led by the team from the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists and the wider Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. So, all of you watching online, you need to tell your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, just about everyone about the Now is the Time Family Health and Evangelistic Series. If you are unable to be at the main site, you can do what you are doing right now. You can watch the series online and that is ejc.sda.com and you can also join us on YouTube at YouTube forward slash watch EJC. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at EJCSDA. Now let's tell you a bit about the schedule. Listen keenly. Every night, and that's from Sunday to Thursday, we'll be here from 7 p.m. The program is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. and so is the live stream. So that's Sunday to Thursday. On Friday night, it's a rest night. And then on Saturdays, Sabbath morning, we're going to be joining you here from 9 o'clock to bring you Sabbath school and Divine Hour. Now, what are some of the topics that the evangelists will be looking at? Dr. Cleghorn spoke at the Andrews Memorial SDA last Sabbath, and that was June 3. And he said he'll be talking about speaking in tongues. We know it's something that is often debated across religions. So he says he's going to be talking about speaking in tongues. And to quote, he said, it's not a mystical mumbo jumbo or incoherent ejaculation. So we're looking forward to that message from Dr. Cleghorn. And other topics include, what is baptism in Jesus' name? Who is God? The Siamese twins? After the wedding and honeymoon? What? Rise, Peter, kill and eat. When seven turned one. Did God make sex? Is heaven a real place? Run for your life. Come now and looking for love. Throughout the series as well, the team will be here. We want to hear from you. We want to pray with you. The line to call and the number if you're interested in speaking with anyone is 924-1061. The number 924-1061. And if you need prayer, there's also a prayer line. That number 282-7339. And the other prayer line number is 282-7349. So we'll be coming to you with the program in just a bit. The praise team is here on standby. And any moment now, we'll be continuing the series here at the Hagley Park tent for the Now is the Time Family Health and Evangelistic Series. Good night, everyone. We welcome you to this night's service, and as we praise God, we invite you to praise God with us. We invite you, please, to stand as we have prayer to begin in this service. Let us pray. Dear most kind and righteous Father, we thank you for bringing us together in this fashion just to give you the most high and the holiest praise. Dear Father, as we are about to start, send your angels to sing with us and help us to join together singing these lovely praises to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our first song is, we are inviting you all to come along. We are having a glorious time. We are inviting you all to come along. We are having a glorious time. We are going to a city where moonlight never shines. May not go, we cannot tell, only others will be there. But
to answer the call. on the throne of heaven. Let us bow our heads together. Our Father, creator of heaven and earth, we would like to thank you for the blessings of the day. We would like to thank you for bringing us here to this spot, holy ground. We ask you now to consecrate this ground May everything that's said and done here tonight be said and done to your honor, to your glory, and to your praise. We seek your divine blessing upon us. We ask that tonight's transmission will be good, that everything will go through as planned, and that men and women and boys and girls from across the world will hear the message and will be inspired to walk in the path of righteousness. We pray for the speaker in a very special way. We pray that you'll use him again tonight as we open up this service, that he will be used in such a way that your name will be glorified again. We pray for the success of tonight's program and for the rest of the series. And we ask, Lord, that men and women, boys and girls, everywhere across the planet will hear the word and give their lives completely over to you. Bless us now, we ask, and what we never ask of you, grant unto us nonetheless as we say thanks in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. And those who are viewing and listening, we have two prayer lines. Numbers are 282-7339. You need prayer? 282-7339 and 282-7384. Thank you. and said, I am lonely, I'll make me a world. So happy, 2,000 years ago, God decided that he was going to make a world so that mankind could worship him. Now is the time for us to worship our creator. I stand this, just at this moment to welcome you to our evangelistic series. It's a series where we will and we will worship our creator 
we will bow down and give honor and glory to his name. And so I say, whether you're under the tent here at Agley Park, or you're at Sandy Park, or you're in the Vale, or you're in Portland, or you may just be across the seas, we welcome you. We say this is the place to be because now is the time. Now is the time for us to get together. Now is the time for us to celebrate because Jesus is coming soon. And we can't just sit like that. We have to get up and let the Lord know that we are truly grateful that he has been blessing us. So my praise team, please come forward. My brothers and sisters, I'll invite you to stand as you help me in welcoming each other to this great gospel crusade where the name of Jesus will be glorified. Let us stand, everybody, as we sing together. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. And if you're at our downlink side, we want you to greet your family members, greet your neighbors. Let us tell them how much we love them. like to inform you of some big things that are happening at the now is the time and in relation to the now is the time series. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, at six o'clock, we will gather together at the Kencott grounds at number 10 Osborne Road. Oh boy, you ready? <laughs> Look at her. This is the East Jamaica Conference. Now is the time. 5K health, run, walk. Walk for health, run for health. Everybody must be on board. And how can I get my shirt? Come on, talk to me. Just walk to the car just now on the left by the tent and collect it and run back inside. Beautiful. And you only have to bring $700. If you want to leave the rest with us, that's okay. Okay, praise the Lord. I am coming because I have to run, walk, ride something tomorrow. At, with we the... have for all sizes. It doesn't matter how small you are, we have it. Okay, thank you so much. I want you to know that this program is a comprehensive program for the whole person. Spiritual, medical, health, social, etc. And so, our facility, wellness center, and medical facility will open officially 11 o'clock on Monday. 
right next door. So you will hear more about it tomorrow evening, but plan to come and see our medical team, our naturopathic doctor, and so forth. And then on Sunday the 18th, we are going to have our big general clinic where we'll have our full medical team out. I want you to also know that transportation is available to assist our friends who need to come. And in a little while, you will see on the screen all the various sites will be having transportation. Bus A um, from G G Gandhi Road to Penwood Road. Right, Farm Road, Turn Olympic Way, etc. Down to Hagley Park. So bus coming from Penwood, bus coming from Seaview Gardens, bus coming from, what is that? Chesterfield Drive, Pacific Boulevard, all these places, Spanish Town Road, Oak Glades. But you ask your friends from the church about it, and the information will be on the screen. Just look and see where your bus is running so that you will not be left behind. Tomorrow, the buses will begin running at 6.45. What time did I say? 6.45. So God bless you, and we continue to enjoy rich and warm fellowship as we come to the Now is the Time series, continuing tomorrow evening. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm very privileged this evening to present to you our president, Dr. Eric Nathan. He leaves this field, and we're very happy to have him here with us this evening. He is a co-evangelist, and he's also the family life presenter for this Now is the Time series. May I invite you at this time to put your hands together and welcome the president, Pastor Eric Nathan. Thank you, Pastor Linton. We can sing the song tonight that says, Lead on, O King Eternal. The day of March has come. Not with swords lost, loud clashing or the roll of stirring drum, but with deeds of love and kindness and mercy, we have come tonight to declare the now is the time crusade open. This crusade is one with a difference. We are going to be emphasizing family life and we are going to be emphasizing healthful living. And we have a very, very good team that will be helping this country, helping this region to understand how we can live a better life, a longer life, and a more fulfilled life. Tonight, I want to introduce to you Dr. Wilbert Reeves and his family. Doc, are you someplace there? Can I ask you to stand? Can I ask you just to come on stage? Come right on stage. This is a man who has been helping people to learn how to reverse lifestyle diseases, diabetes, hypertension. When you come, come right up, sir. When you come to the crusade, you will be learning Ways and means to live a healthy lifestyle. He believes in the family and he's here with his family tonight. I am introducing the man who will be here every night and he is going to be having a clinic that will help you to understand how you can reverse lifestyle diseases and how you can live healthy, happy, and for a long time praising God. Thank you very much, sir, and may God bless you and family. Amen. There's somebody I want to introduce. I'm going to ask Pastor Cunningham to come. Pastor Carl Cunningham, I want to introduce him to you. First, as the, the individual who, for the first time in the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in East Jamaica Conference, we have somebody who is entitled assistant to the president. He is... Um, using this title for the first time we have seen such in East Jamaica Conference. Pastor Carl Cunningham, can I invite you to ask your wife to come beside you? This is a 
family life and a healthful crusade. So we are going to ask him to come up with his family. And I'll tell you, he is advisor to the president. And he is to help us to lead out in, in leadership and training and evangelism. And that is why, thank you, Pastor Carl, bringing your wife, Sister Sandra, with you. And we want to introduce you to Jamaica and to the rest of the world as a person who is having the full responsibility for all that is happening here. He is the manager for this campaign. And he is the one who asks all of us, bring us to the point where we give reports and fill him in with all the latest development. When there's a concern, this is a man who supervises the entire program. He is the one who has to do with logistics. And I'm telling you tonight, we are blessed in having Pastor Cunningham and his family leading out in this Now is the Time campaign. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. And we now know that you are the man in charge. And you are going to be the one who will help us to see the victory here at the Now is the Time campaign. I, I want to introduce to you the evangelist. The man of God. Somebody who is going to take us from one level to another. He is a man of God, somebody that I have been acquainted with for a very long time. He's my trusted friend. We went to college the same time. We were ordained the same time. And we have done so many things together. God has been using us to take care of business. And so tonight I'm introducing to you a man who has been an ordained minister of religion for the past 38 years. He is, from he is a man from Trelawney, Duncan Trelawney, and he has been a product of Christian education. Evangelist, my friend, a product of Christian education, starting at Harris Memorial High School in West Jamaica. Then he moved to NC2, West Indies College we went, and now Northern Caribbean University, where he obtained his bachelor's degree. And then he moved from there to... Chicago, Michigan, where he obtained his master's in, in religion and now his doctorate in ministry. We are very happy for him. He's a man who has served the church. Not only that, he is somebody who in 1989, he was called to work with the Northeastern Conference headquarters in Jamaica, Queens, New York City. And he served not only as pastor of the Sharon Church, but he was the youth director, which he continued to do for a, for a period of about 10 years. We are very happy for him. But as a son of the soil, when West Indies, when West Indies Union and when the Northern Caribbean University needed a dean for the School of Religion and Theology, they sent for him from Bronx, New York, where he ministered to young people. And now he served, he served NCU as the, the dean of the School of Religion and Theology. But now the university has asked him to be a vice president for student services. We are happy for Pastor Cleghorn, who is going to be our chief leader in this campaign. He is one who believes in team ministry. And his wife, Dr. Wayne Elizabeth Cleghorn, they have been serving in ministry as team workers for the past 30 and 6 years as husband and wife. She is a certified science teacher. She's a registered nurse. Just graduated a few days ago from Andrews University as one who is PhD in, in leadership from Andrews University. Pastor Clegon has a philosophy as a long-time youth director. He believes that a church without young people is a dying church. And he wants us to see all that we can do to mentor and minister to the young people of the Adventist church as our mentor, was one of our objectives. Tonight, he's going to present to us a message of hope. But before he comes, as president of East Jamaica Conference, I take the opportunity of declaring 
the now is the time campaign as the wonderful ministry that God has given to the church at this time. We declare the now is the, camp, now is the time campaign open for ministry. Can somebody say amen? amen? Let me hope that those of us out there in the different churches, let me encourage you to bring your neighbors Bring your friends to your own downlink site and to those who are outside of Jamaica and Canada, USA and over the world. We have the now is the time campaign because now is the time to wake out of sleep. For what? Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. God bless you. Enjoy the now is the time. Pray for the now is the time campaign. Encourage people to come to the now is the time campaign. And who knows? This might be one of the final opportunity that the church gets to present the gospel message to a dying world and may God bless you People say amen. amen. All the people say amen. amen. All the people say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The people say hallelujah. hallelujah. The people say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
And if you believe he's going to do something special for you tonight, just raise your hand and say, Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Bless God for this opportunity to come and be the conduit, God's conduit, God's instrument to speak to the world about the good news that Jesus saves, that Jesus saves, that Jesus keeps, and that Jesus satisfies. And so tonight, as will the other nights, this is going to be a special moment of prayer. We're, invo in, we're involving the entire tent. Those who are outside the tent to join me in a special moment of prayer. As we sing the song, for you I'm praying. Let us stand and sing the song together. For you I'm praying. For you I'm praying. For you I'm praying. I'm praying for you. And whilst we're standing and we're singing, I want you to turn to the person next to you. And you're going to ask God for two things tonight. One, for him to give you the blessings you have come for tonight. And number two, for you to ask him to bring somebody to him tonight that has never come to him before. And there will be a wonderful, dramatic surrender of lives tonight as we preach the everlasting gospel. For you I'm praying. For you. For you. For you. For you, I am praying. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And you need to be praying right where you are, right where you are. One person in the group can pray now as we softly sing the song. For you, I am praying. I am praying for you. I'm praying. I'm praying for you. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, God of love and mercy, we're standing in your presence on holy ground. And we know that angels, angels are all around this place to guide us in a path that leads to life everlasting. Come now, God, and fill my mouth with the power of your word. Draw men and women, boys and girls, to come to know you as Lord and Savior. And we thank you for hearing this prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, let the people say, For you I am for you, I am praying. For you, I am praying. I'm praying for you. Let's be seated now in the presence of, of our God. As we look to him tonight to give us answers to all our questions. To give us the life of his son Jesus Christ so that we can be what he wants us to be. Right following the preaching of the word. We're opening up into a, a gospel extravaganza under this tent. Where individuals who have come from far and near will be coming to lift up the name of Jesus in song. What do you say? We're going to fill this place with praise and adoration to our God. What do you say? So right after this, we're going to move straight. We're going to segue from the preached word into a time of praise and adoration to our God. What do you say? My subject tonight, quickly, is good news. <laughs> That's my subject. Good news. Good news. Good news. I used to remember singing 
in a quartet many years ago. We had a favorite song, Good News, Chariots Are Coming. Good News, Chariots Are Coming. Good News, Chariots Are Coming, and I don't want it to leave me behind. Good news tonight. Sometimes when you turn on your television and you hear the news that is happening all over the world, it depresses you. Isn't that right? It makes you sad sometimes. I remember somebody was sitting at the table. We're eating together. And I don't know why the person turned on the television. But the moment the news came out, the person fainted in her plate. The news was so terrible that the person could not, could not take the news. Bad news, we call it. Yes, bad news. The news around our world makes us shiver at times. When a terrorist goes into a place and bombs up a place and hundreds of lives are destroyed. When, when, when somebody runs over somebody just in the heat of what we call road rage. When somebody breaks into somebody's house and opens fire and an innocent person dies. Bad news. But I got good news for you tonight. The good news is found in John chapter 3 verse 16. The Bible says, for God. Are you with me? For God. So loved the world. John 3, 16, I'm talking about now. Yes, read it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You got to say amen about that. This God, this God, who loved this world so much. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. It doesn't matter whether you are rich. Or poor. Black. Or brown. I'm going to shock you tonight. I have never seen a white man. I've never seen anybody with this color. And anytime you find somebody that looks like this. Let me know. I'm, I don't know. I've never seen a white man. And I've traveled all over the world. I've seen brown men and pink men, but never white man. So whether you be black, brown, pink, let me tell you, whosoever is for you, what do you say? Whether you be rich or poor, whether you live up in the hills or down in the valley, Whosoever is for you, let me hear you say amen. Whether you have a degree or not, whether you drive a Mercedes Benz or a little chicky chaka, chicky chaka little car. Let me tell you, God does not watch the car you drive. God watches how closely you are to him. Let me hear you say amen. And there are some people who believe they are better than you because of where they live and what they drive and how many degrees they have. But man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. Let the people say, man, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me hear you say, that is the good news. It's the good news for Kingston. It's the good news uh, for St. Andrew. It's the good news for St. Thomas. It's the good news for Jamaica. It's the good news for Inter-America. It's the good news for the whole world. Let me hear you say amen. And whether you are watching in Jamaica, or you are watching in Johannesburg, South Africa, or you are watching in New York City, USA, or you are watching in Toronto, Canada, or you are watching in Port of Spain, Trinidad, or you are watching from Mandeville, Jamaica, I want you to know that we are live streaming on www.ejcs.com. 
da.com. Let me hear you say amen. Follow us every night because everything we say will come out of the book. What do you say? It will not come out of my philosophy. It will not come out of anybody's philosophy. But it will come out from the word of the living God. Let me hear you say amen. Psalm 119, 105 says what? Thy word is a what? Is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I praise God tonight that the word of God is not only a lamp, but it is light and it will lead me in the path of righteousness. Let me hear you say amen. So that's the good news I have. The good news is that before the foundations of the world, Jesus volunteered to save the beings he made in his image should they sin, and they did sin. Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, but it was not an emergency for God, for God had planned it already. When it comes to God, there are no emergencies, for he sees the end from the beginning. My God is seeing into the future what we do not know about because he is the God of the past, he is the God of the present, and he is the God of the future. Let me hear you say amen. That's why when Adam and Eve sinned, he uttered a powerful declaration in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I wanted to share it with you. Now, by the way, you bring your Bible every night. I will have my Bible here because this is the word of the living God. What do, you, what do you say? The Bible and the Bible alone is what speaks under this tent. What do you say? So bring your Bible and follow, follow with me. The Bible says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Let me hear you say amen. When Adam and Eve sinned, it was not an emergency. And the good news in the Garden of Eden is that Jesus declared war. Anytime you touch God's children, it's a warfare. Because he died for you. Because he made you in his image. We are special in the sight of God. What do you say? And so he told Satan... I am going to war with you now. War, and we call it in more theological terms, the great controversy. The great controversy is a war between sin and righteousness. Between good and evil. Between Christ and Satan. But let me tell you something. Satan is a loser man. But Jesus is a winner man. Let me hear you say man. Yes, and I will put enmity. Jesus declared war in the Garden of Eden. Not a war on Iraq. Not a war on Afghanistan. Not a war on Cuba. Not a war on anywhere. This war is not a physical war. It's not a war about guns and bayonets and Molotov cocktail bombs. It is not like that. It is not... The, the, this warfare is not of human devising. This warfare is being led by Jesus. And the devil wants your life. But Jesus is, has given his life. So you don't need to give yourself to the devil. Just give yourself to Jesus. Let me hear you say amen. Oh yes. Bible says it shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. That means when Jesus died upon the cross, the heel of Jesus was bruised. Bible says he was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, but with, it, with his stripes. Where are you? Let me hear you say amen. But let me tell you, that was just a, a bruise to the heel of Jesus. But hey, neighbor, let me tell you something. One of these days, sooner than you think, God is going to put on the death blow, the head blow upon Satan. Are you with me? 
And when he puts the death blow upon Satan, it's going to be a head blow, a fatal blow to his head. And the Bible says, John the Revelator pictured how Satan is going to die. The Bible says, Satan came up and encamped the beloved city, the city of Jerusalem. With all the saints in it and Jesus in it. Let me tell you where Jesus is, you are safe. And it, let me say it again. Anywhere Jesus is, you are safe. And so he's going to encamp the saints and the beloved city. And the Bible tells me that fire. What? Fire. One of these nights I'm going to tell you about fire. Fire. F-I-R-E. Fire. Will come down from God out of heaven. And destroy Satan. And his angels. And all those who choose to follow him. And the Bible says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire and sin will be destroyed forevermore. Let me hear you say amen. And when that happens, there'll be no more sin. But something else, Revelation chapter 22, 1 to 4 tells us about the good news. Let me hear you say amen. The good news that Jesus does not only saves, not only keeps but Jesus satisfies. Hear the good news. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, 22, chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 1. I want you to follow me clearly tonight. I want you to see how God is going to do his thing. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it. And on the other side of the river was there the tree of life. Which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Let the people say amen. Listen and there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. Let me hear you say amen. amen. I want to give you another text. I want to give you another text in Revelation. I want to give you another text in Revelation that's going to sum up the message for tonight. Because ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that God is not finished yet. God is not finished yet. And the book of Revelation tells us that there will be a complete destruction of evil and a complete establishment of righteousness. Revelation chapter 21 that's where I want to go. Revelation chapter 21. Come on read it with me. And I a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more what? No, nothing to divide us. Sometimes when we want to go to another country, we have to go either by boat or by air. And sometimes the place is so far. I traveled to London some, some years ago. It took us over 14 hours to get to Heathrow from Kingston. 14 hours. But thank God there will be nothing to divide us anymore. Let me hear you say amen. Bible says, and I saw, are you there? Are you there with me? And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let me hear you say amen. The best description of what's going to happen before God built down fire on the devil. Prepared as a bride adorned. And listen to verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying what? Behold the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be their God. Let the people say amen. Look at verse 4 now. Good news. Good news. And God. 
I can't hear you. And God shall do what? Wipe away all tears from their eyes. When my mother died, when my father died, when my young sister died, I cried like a baby. But one of these days, when God calls them back from their grave in the first resurrection, for the Bible says that the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And they'll be caught up to meet him in the air. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to be there to greet them on resurrection morning. Let me hear you say, man. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more what? We are going, God is going to fire all funeral directors. They'll be out of a job. No more death. All the cemeteries will be closed down. All the hearses will be shut down. Are you listening to me? No more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. No more back pain. No head pain. No eye pain. No more glasses. You're going to be seeing 2020. Let me hear you say amen. No more crutch to walk upon because everybody will be as free as a bird in the tree. Let me hear you say, man. No more of this. No more diabetes. No more blood pressure. No more kidney problems. Let the people say, man. No more. No more. No more. Because the former things. Let the people say, man. If there is a cause for excitement tonight, it's a cause that the good news says that better days are coming by and by. Let me hear you say amen. And when that happens and Satan is destroyed and the wicked are destroyed and the angels that followed him are destroyed. I have a quote from you from the book, The Great Controversy. Let me share the quote with you. It says, the great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats throughout the vast creation. From him who created all flow life and light and gladness throughout the realms of illimitable space. From the minutest atom to the greatest world, all things, animate and inanimate, in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy, will declare, will declare, will declare that God is love. Let me hear you say that. I want to be there. I want to be faithful by the grace of God to be there. How many of you want to be there? Stand up. Just stand up. Stand to your feet tonight. Stand to your feet tonight. God is going to bless you tonight as you have come on this opening night of the Now is the Time Evangelistic. And I want to raise your hands. If you want to be with God, when the roll is called up yonder, and you say, by the grace of God, say after me, by the grace of God, I want to be there. By the grace of God. I want to be there by the grace of God. I want to be there. Bow your heads, Father. You've heard the chorus of voices under this tent. Young men and young women, middle-aged and old children, declaring tonight that they want to be there with you when you come in your glorious kingdom. Oh God, take everyone tonight. And turn them from sinners into saints. Turn them from wickedness to righteousness. Turn, if some are here who are scam artists, turn them from scamming into reading the word of God. And making themselves surrender to you. Oh God, if they are criminals, I don't know. Maybe somebody brought a gun. But Lord, give them victory to turn in the 9mm or the AK-44 
or the M16. And when they turn it in, give them the best book, the M66, the Bible. And let them walk and begin to talk about Jesus. There are some here tonight who are living in concubinage. They're not yet married. But they're enjoying all that marriage offers. I pray tonight that you will talk to somebody who is in concubinage. Who is shacking up. Oh God, give them victory so they get married. So rather than shacking up, they will live up for Jesus. Oh God, whatever else is going on to this tent right now. We pray that the mighty power of Jesus will take over. And God, as we move in tomorrow night, when our subject will be famine in the land, may this tent be filled and running over. And may those who need to know about Jesus, may they come and hear the good news of salvation. Surrender to the good news that is found in the person named Jesus. And Lord, Kingston will be changed. St. Thomas will be changed. St. Andrew will be changed. Jamaica will be changed. The world will be changed for Jesus. And we thank you that you have heard, that you have answered this prayer. And the prayers that are being prayed around this tent. This is our prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, let the people say. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated in the presence of God. And so until tomorrow night. Until tomorrow night. When did I say? When did I say? Until tomorrow night right here under this tent. And with the 47 sites download all over Kingston, St. Andrew and St. Thomas. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Both now and forevermore, let all of the people say, Amen and Amen. Amen. As the ushers take their place, brothers and sisters, you will agree with me that the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Do you agree with me, brothers and sisters? Shout if you agree with me that the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Amen. As partners in this missionary venture, we celebrate the victory we have through Christ Jesus. I want you brothers and sisters to join with us in making that spiritual commitment toward the success of this campaign. I want you to join with us brethren in making that commitment. And in making that commitment we ask that you take a special offering as you come nightly so that the running of this campaign can be efficient and so that we can maintain our live stream feed. What do you say? So as we bow our heads and as you prepare to give, let us pray a prayer in our hearts that God will lead out in this campaign. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Almighty Heavenly God and Father, we thank you so much for your love and for your bounteous blessings upon us. We thank you for what you have been doing and for the way in which you have been leading in the preparation for this campaign. We ask now, dear Father, as we prepare to give as a commitment to the success of the running of this campaign, that you would bless those that give, bless the efforts, and help that everything will go according to your will. We thank you for what you have done and for what you will do, and we claim your promises tonight. In your son's name we pray.
Amen. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart. Since Jesus made everything right, I gave him my old tattered garment in exchange for a robe of pure white. God so loved the world that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So we just heard a short while ago from Evangelist Dr. Newton Leghorn. He spoke about the good news. He called to say to God, blessings are falling tonight. Now earlier we heard from the evangelist Dr. Newton Cleghorn and he told us about the good news. He quoted St. John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. He also quoted 1 Samuel 16 verse 17 and a part of that text says, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but Lord looketh on the heart. So that concludes night one of the Now is the Time Family Health and Evangelistic Series. But don't go anywhere because in addition to this, we have a special concert that is coming up. So just write at the website, ejc.sda, ejc rather, ejcsda.com. Let's get that correct. ejcsda.com. You can continue watching the live stream where we have a special concert in store for you. So until tomorrow night, this is Andrea Chisholm saying good night, take care and God bless.